<risos> Ronaldinho Sousa! Okay, so I'm going to ask you, with those musical beat, you know, the music tones that you do for Big Band, yeah. the Ronaldinho Soccer, how long did that take to create? <laughs> it actually didn't take me that long, um, that one specifically. It took me around about maybe an hour, may, it were probably two hours tops. Um, the, the one that took way longer than that was the Darud Sandster one. That one took me like... <laughs> A good yeah. three days around about. And, oh, yeah. and a recent one that I made, which was like um, music from the Ace Attorney series, that took me like almost a month to do. Um, but most of the work that goes into that, because all the stuff that I've been doing with that has been um, tool assisted. So it was just um, for when I did the Darude one, a lot of the work went into coming up with the methods that I use to sort of make that stuff happen. Yeah. And then at that point, it's mostly about, um, most of the work is finding middies on the internet <laughs> and then trying to manipulate them in a way that it, it makes them do the thing that I want them to do. So like, for example, often you'll find middies that have um, multiple, they'll have like chords, for example, but Big Bang can only play uh, one note at a time at a time yeah so you'll have to sort of split up the the notes in the chord um and also changing like the lengths of the notes because if you don't hold down um any buttons for a while he'll like stop playing he'll, yeah he like, drops put the, the trumpet, trumpet down yeah. he drops the trumpet so you gotta make the notes longer um so that he doesn't drop the trumpet and he keeps going and the thing is as well he can only hold down the notes for so long so sometimes if there's too big of a gap you just um need to have him drop the trumpet and then like pick it back up for the next section yeah so there's actually a decent amount of manipulation that goes into it beyond um just finding the midis to do it which was kind of a bummer because i was hoping for it to be like a really low effort sort of easy way to get cloud in the internet yeah uh, I mean, it's it i mean you got yeah, you but, grabbed a couple of thousand on some of those vids man yeah, it was crazy. Um, the Ronaldinho soccer one, especially. I, I wasn't. I, I expected it to like get a decent amount, but it, it got way more. Oh yeah. Um, I saw it. I thought, than I thought oh, it was God. going to. He's done that I, one. I think, I think it's got like on Twitter. That one's got um, it's got over seventy thousand views. I think. <laughs> just on just on Twitter. Jesus. And. and also, a decent amount on YouTube. Um, not as much as on Twitter. It's got more views on Twitter than anywhere else. Mm. But yeah, that, that was that was uh, pretty wild to see it spread so much and so quickly. Yeah, no, you're very you're very you're very creative with your with your musical talents. Um, <laughs> I guess we just I guess we just kind of breeze through the intro. But um, yeah, for those who are listening or watching, tell us a bit about yourself, man. Uh, I I'm Taylor. Uh, I go by Mao in the community, and I play a lot of different fighting games. I'm most known as being a Skullgirls player, but I also play a whole bunch of other stuff, a lot of anime. Um, I have my roots in Smash. I also play Marvel, and I also play a lot of uh, what people call poverty games and try to sort of push those games within the New Zealand community. Yeah, that... Yeah, that is is that a, a poverty poverty games like the games that are overshadowed by like the the big titan of like the big titans right I f yeah i i also feel like poverty is sort of like a catch all term because um that people use for games that you know you can just find on the internet often they're free it's um it actually also i have a lot of my roots in fighting games in poverty before i was even part of the scene because um growing up i didn't want to ask my parents to use their credit card so i would often try and like search on the sure you can forums and through google or any means that i could find to just find various fighting games on the internet so that i could like download them and just muck around in training mode this is like, but well before I was involved in the New Zealand community. Okay, so so what were some of the games that? So what were some of the gems that you found on the Shoryuken website? Um, there was 
quite a few. There, I remember there was one um, that was it was like a Marvel vs. Capcom fan game in Mugen, and I remember this one because it has one of the most hilariously broken things that I've ever seen in a fighting game. Um, because there's a character, it's it's Hulk twenty something something. I think it's like based on a future version of Hulk or something like that. And he has a move, a special move that's kind of like Gamma Charge. But then I realized that um, you can cancel into it from any state. So you can essentially just do it into itself like over and over and it's an infinite. But then what, what's really funny is that you can really do it from any state. So that includes the animation, you know, the intro animation. Yeah. Like before the round starts, you can cancel that into that special move. So you can attack people before the round starts. Jesus, that's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an infinite as well. Jesus. A true 10 0 matchups against the entire cast. You know what? Actually, that's a fair point because I feel like whenever a new game comes out, you're one of those people that wants to try it out. You know, the poverty attitude. Yeah. <laughs> but then you instantly try to find ways to break it, like discovering infinites, discovering any flaws like yeah yeah to be honest like finding a lot of the stuff that's like on the fringe it's it's a big part of the enjoyment that i get out of fighting games um and it's often you're like the types of fighting games that you're least likely to find me in are sort of um I guess some of the more established franchises where people know a lot more about the systems, there, there isn't a, a lot of new stuff um, to explore and maybe stuff might be a bit homogenous or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I definitely get a lot of enjoyment out of like finding uncharted territory, yeah. that sort of stuff in terms of what's possible in a mm. fighting game. Because I mean, especially at our bats, you know, when you're there, and I see you play, I'm, I'm always aware that it's going to be a game that most of the people at the venue haven't seen before. How did you find your way into our community? Um, so I originally heard about the New Zealand community probably like maybe 2012-ish because that's when I was first getting into fighting games, like discovering the fighting game community in general. Um, because I was... Well, how how I got my in into fighting games was um, from Marvel Three, because um, I s used to watch a lot of IGN on YouTube, and I and in the like Marvel Three trailer got recommended to me. I was like, oh, this looks cool. And then I saw a bunch of like gameplay of Marvel Three. I saw, um, you know, the Bionic Arm video. Oh yes, yeah. That that was huge for me in terms of like understanding the appeal of like the fighting game community and sort of getting me. Um, excited to watch VODs. Like, for a long time, I watched a, a lot of Marvel 3, um, and that's sort of how I eventually discovered that the New Zealand community exists, because, like, I had Marvel 3, and I tried to play online a few times, but, like, the netcode for that game is stink as. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I just assumed for a long time that, like, no one in New Zealand, like, it was too niche, like, no one around here, like, it, it wouldn't exist. It's yeah. like only in the states, but that's just like not true at all. Um, but then I think it was I found out about Southern Cross Up because um, there was so I took like geography in high school, and there was a time where we went to like Auckland Uni for like some lecture thing, um, and I saw flyers for Southern Cross Up. Um, on one of the walls or whatever. I was yeah. like, oh, that's cool. Like, like that exists. So I get it's from from that point, it's like um outreach like that in terms of like putting up flies, like it does work. It, it get it gets eyes on the community. Yeah. Um what was I talking about? <laughs> um <laughs> uh, you talk about like getting involved in the community. You saw a pamphlet outside. Yeah, I saw a pamphlet. Outreach. But I, I didn't go that year. I think this might have been twenty twelve or twenty thirteen because I think I saw that um there was a few things that it might have been a venue at a bar or something. It was like an I, I needed a guardian. I was like, oh, I'm not convincing like my parents or my siblings to like take me along. That this yeah. will, like yeah, I, I don't want them to like hang around for something that they're not really keen on. Um, and also, I, I think, at the time, like, DualShock 3s were banned, 
because of like the wireless controllers. I, I, I'm not sure if that was the case, but I think oh. I remember seeing something about that. Jesus. I was like, oh, that stink. That's like the, the controller that I use. It's like, mm. how do I, do I need to, um, you know, get, get like a stick or something to be a part of this? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, but my first sort of tournament for didn't come from the FGC. <laughs> It came more from Smash. So there was a tournament in 2014 called Revival of Auckland, which was a melee tournament that was held at um, the uni, Auckland Uni. And that was um, the first tournament that I went to. I went there with um, two of my high school friends, David and Scott. Um, David still is fairly involved in the Smash community. He goes by Aroski. Oh, Aeroskin, yes, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so the three of us, we went there together, and that was sort of like our start with the Smash community. And from there, um, because I went to Southern Cross up in 2014, so that's sort of, um, I don't, I don't think I ended up playing, I think I, I, I might have only played Melee there, but it was a good chance to sort of like get amongst the fighting game scene and like see that a lot of this stuff like really does exist and, you know, yeah um yeah and over time um i began sort of less involved with the smash scene and more with um the fighting game community there was southern cross up 2015 which um they actually did run skullgirls at which was really cool for i was like that's tight this is like my chance to um, play that, and that that was cool. I actually, yeah, I actually entirely forgot about um, how Skullgirls comes into this because I I was playing, I was already entering tournaments for Skullgirls like before before I entered that that Smash tournament. Yeah, I was already like, wh- yeah, because this would have been I think late 2013. So you know how I said before that. I, I didn't want to borrow my f- family's like credit card. Yeah, yeah. So, because when I found about Skullgirls, this was like also through YouTube. There, someone made like a compilation video of like fighting games released in 2012, and there were like clips from various fighting games. Yeah. Um, and there was some Parasol gameplay from Skullgirls. I was like, oh, this looks cool. Um, so I downloaded the demo um, when I really should have been studying for my exams. Um, <laughs> And I would just play the demo because I, I didn't want, because y- you couldn't get like a physical copy of Skullgirls. You couldn't like go to what well, EB games or whatever and pick it up. So it was just like, I, I didn't want to borrow like the credit card or whatever. So I just played the demo yep. and I played the demo for like two years um, before hell. I finally <laughs> bought the game, just like playing training mode and playing the AI. Yeah. Um, and eventually, this was in like late 2013, I picked up the game. And around about the time of the Steam release, there were people trying to push, um, trying to run tournaments in Australia and New Zealand. So I like entered those. And that was sort of the beginnings of the Skullgirls community in um, Oceania. Yeah. Which has kind of like continued to this day. Yeah, am I am I fair to say that like originally, I mean it's not odd, but it was a game that only had female characters. Yeah, um, on on launch it only had female characters. Um, yeah. Beowulf and Big Band are the only two male characters in the game. Um, and both of those are DLC. If you can, if you can think about it this way, it's almost like the, you know how in Street Fighter Two there's like only Cami and Chun. Oh yeah, yeah. Are they the only girls? It's like the other way around. It's the like the other way around, yeah. Opposite. It's, just, yeah. You know, it's an interesting dynamic. You don't see it that often. Like mostly you, you really female don't. cast. Yeah. Although I there's probably a few other examples. Like I think Arcana Heart is an all female cast, for example. I, I might be wrong yeah. about that, but from memory it is. Um but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like you know, a decision that they made. Because, mm. you know, there's people like you and there's also um, NCEA, um, there's Counter 2 and, you know, your hentai goddess, Matt, you know, there's a few of you guys that really promote the, the, 
those titles that don't get that big exposure because it's not funded by big million dollar companies and such. Yeah, that's that's sort of like as time has gone on, that's been a big part of like the enjoyment that I get out of this community is getting a chance to sort of share share a lot of games with people that might not otherwise see the time of day. Um because as as I've already talked about, um I always was into a lot of different fighting games that I was I was just convinced that almost no one else in the world like ever played. And occasionally throughout the years at local events I'd sort of bring them I'm, I'm mainly I'm, maybe I'd get some games in with like some people here and there, but you know, if if it's like me who like has actually practiced a game ver- like trying to fight someone who has never seen this game in their life like it's of more times than not it's probably not going to be like that fun yeah for for the people that i'm playing so and it's hard, kind of hard to convince people to put their time into um something where they're really like who are they going to play like me i guess <laughs> yeah i mean cuz you know like, i mean the games the games are very interesting but if you don't recognize the title or the company, at least the maker, it it's it's not the fear of it's not the fear of playing it because it's unknown. It's just more so like you don't understand what the game's about, the concept of how you play. Yeah, like and it, and there's also a lot of um, just the fact that there's so many fighting games out there that mm. you really can't play every game just because it seems cool. Um, you kind of have to make some sort of decision of like which games would you rather put time into and i have to make those decisions as well um i can't just play everything that i'm remotely interested otherwise i wouldn't have any time to you know do any of the other stuff that i need to do in life yeah i mean because would you say that when you come across a new game you'll commit a couple of weeks to it and then you'll potentially drop it or not come back to it yeah um it's sort of like that i i tend to um i i feel like i have a pretty open mind with regards to trying different stuff um i i also i i also sometimes actually very often um will sort of pick up a game pick up the basics and just like rather than grind it super hard just like into tournaments and support the scene um, you know, pop monster, as they say, <laughs> just because, um, I'd rather use my time elsewhere, I guess. Yeah. Like, so even though other games may come out, you still consider yourself like a big skull girls. Like that's the game you'll make. Yeah, that, that's, that's my game. Yeah. yeah. That, that, like that will always probably be the game that I play the most. Like it's. It was the first, like, fighting game that I was good at, um, and it's been a part of, you know, my journey this whole time, um, and, yeah, it's, that, prob- I, I don't really expect anything to change that at this point. Yeah. You were doing pretty well, um, on Counter 2, actually. You Counter 2. Yeah, you were, pl- yeah. Did, yeah, I think you made the grand finals, um, playing, um, Tosh, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, like that's a game what, where it's like, I mean, I I, I, like, I actually won I as like, well. I did. I wasn't just in grand finals. Yeah, I I like I like the I I like the visuals, but I'm thinking, what the hell do these characters do? Like, <laughs> I hate I hate katana kanta. Like, yeah, a character should not be able to cross you up cross you up that easily. Everyone can cross you up pretty easily, counter man. <laughs> it's Bro. kind of the name of the game. I think um, I remember. I think I remember when you, you. It wasn't Matt. It was you that signed me up to play Kianta, um one time, and I was so eager. Yeah. And then I played NCEA with um, Ro, uh, Az- Azura, the the shooting. Oh, bomb. the crocodile. Yeah, and I have. Yeah. I've been scarred. <laughs> I've been scarred. You got man. Super. Yeah. Um, Kianta, that Okay, that's that's um, because we haven't mentioned Counter at all yet, and that that's. A pretty important game, I reckon, um, with regards to this whole trying to push, push games. Um, in the past, it's just been like because Count has been one of those games before. Because I've known about this game for a long time, 
for several years because it came out on Steam last year, but I, I, I've i actually been playing it longer than that. How I originally found out about Kianta was from a Japanese Skullgirls player called Gontenter, Yeah. who um, posts... He, he he just kept on posting so much tech for this game. I was like, what what is, what is this even? <laughs> um, so I looked for myself. It, w it was on like an Ichio um, before it was on Steam. Um, and then I sort of started playing that. And, and also, and it kind of got added to the rotation of games that I would try to, you know, um, sneak in some sets with people when I can. Um, shouts to Lewis. I played Keanu with him um, quite a lot of times before. Um, I started running brackets for it. Um, yeah, uh, so I started running tournaments. Oh, that was nice, Perry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> so I started running tournaments to account in um, 2019. So sort of, it, it was kind of coincided with the Steam release of the game in a way. I'm from memory. Um, but I think Kianta in particular was a great. Like, the, the qualities that has it in a game, I think it suits really well for trying to sort of convince people to play it and sort of grow a small community. Yeah. I just think out of the games that I play, it was particularly well suited for, you know, growth within the local scene. Um, a part of that is it's sort of fairly... Um, at least at the surface level, it's simplistic gameplay. It, you know, it's a four-button game... There's no motions or anything. There's very generous buffers. You know, you can do a super with one button, and it does so much damage. They explode. Yeah, <laughs> St stuff like that. Um, which sort of people can pr press some buttons, and they can see some cool shit happening. You know, that that sort of stuff is always good. Um, just for at the starting, and also I think that. The game's aesthetic and its sound design and a lot of the stuff to s surrounding it also help with like conditioning the people playing it. it's like wow this looks so crazy and then like it gets them in the mindset to experience some of the uh, crazy shenanigans that can go on within the gameplay itself yeah um i think the aesthetic and the sound it's like it, it's a big part of the appeal of the game in my opinion I thought it was so cool that when, you know, the Kianta 2 event was to happen at Southern Cross Up and you had the actual, like, yeah. developer make a Twitter post and a drawing for it. I thought that was an awesome shout out, bro. It was, re it was really cool. I, I actually was, um, I wanted to print it out and, like, take it with me and sort of have it, um, with the setups as, like, you know, like a poster sort of thing. Yeah. But, I, I just didn't have time to print it out. I was actually really busy that week with um, some of the stuff for uni. Yeah. It, it was like it was, it was a big week that week. I just it's so cool like to have a developer really appreciate you know you just as a person promoting their game and to do that for you. Um, yeah, I mean that's that, that's the best way to engage you know a lot of people to actually take interest in the game and and such. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of seen, sort of like the support from. Actually, that's sort of another part where I like. It helps me in terms of um, my enjoyment of fighting games is, uh, oftentimes with a lot of the smaller developers, they they won't get a lot of people that sort of um, yeah. grind so out the game so and like discover so much stuff. So in a way, it's sort of like, hey, check out what's possible in your game, or like. Or even when, or the fact there's like running tournaments where maybe not a lot of tournaments will exist. Like for, for example, to as far as I know, and I'm pretty sure this is true. Yeah, when when I ran the tournament for Schwarzer Blitz, this was in March. That is the one offline Schwarzer Blitz tournament that has ever been ran. Yep. So it was it was like a big deal to the person who developed that game. They they live in Germany and they they were like bloody stoked that you know that people were so many people were playing the game. Yeah, no, definitely. I um actually fair point to mention, um, and you've confirmed it. They've announced it on Steam today. Yes, um, you can get it. It's for free. It was free before on um, Itchio, but now you know it's on Steam. It's it's a lot easier to find um so if, if you're into 3d fighters it's got some interesting uh mechanics 
It's got a lot of different combo routes that are possible. Um, I don't know. I just think it's a neat game. If you if you're into that stuff, you know, give it a jam. It's it's free. Yeah, definitely. Might as well. Um, also, the creator. Um, now I'm gonna probably butcher his name, Andrea Demetrio. Um, yeah, I had a brief, right. yeah I had a brief chat with him, and he was saying it was actually because of you, my man, that he had to force like he had to do. He had to implement an infinite prevention system. Ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because okay, I, I'll I'll talk about that for a sec. Because yeah, um, when when I first found the game, um, I think there were a few instances of like people finding infinites in the past, but it was just um. So how the combo system for Shores of Blitz goes is that for each move, um, there are a certain like, amount of other moves that that move can chain into. Mm. So, like, but it isn't... You know how a lot of games have, like, a magic series or whatever, where it's, like, it, it's got some kind of rule to it? Yeah. Um, as like, in, like, ABC or whatever? Yeah. Um, It doesn't really work like that in Shores of Blitz. It's just, like, it's it's very much on a move-by-move -move basis Um, what can chain into what. So it's it's actually kind of difficult to sort of explore that sort of stuff because you sort of for each move you sort of have to look up what your options are. Um, but it kind of turns out with the way that it is that there's a decent amount of freedom in terms of what's possible. But the developer they kind of didn't um, take into a account that it was possible to do links. Because you yeah. know how in a lot of fighting games, yeah, well, I guess for those that aren't in the know, a link is when the move completely recovers and you go back to neutral, but they ha are in hit stun for long enough that you can start up another that move you afterwards yeah. and you can, yeah. Um, whereas a chain is you're cancelling the recovery of the first move into the next move. So when the developer was making the game, um, they were pretty much only really focused on on chains as a combo system um so one thing about the chain system is like you once you've used a move in a chain you can't go back to it yeah so in a way that prevents you from chaining forever but it doesn't prevent something like you have a fast move and that you can do a chain route from that fast move into a move that's like that's plus enough on hit that you can like link back into the fast move and do the chain again. <laughs> so basically, once I realized that that's how it works, I, I was like finding infinite after infinite. Yeah. <laughs> um, with pretty much the entire cast. The first few times that I did it, it was like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I'll look at that. And then, like, you know, six infinites later, it's like, okay, I guess this is a problem, right? <laughs> And you enjoy and you enjoy doing that. Eh? You do, you enjoy discovering it, exploring and that. It's so much fun. Like because the thing is, when when I first was mucking around with the game, it's it's like not something that you necessarily realize. And it's sort of like as you're mucking around with it more, it's like, wait a sec, this is broken. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, I'm sure the developers have a different mindset. They're thinking, oh, you know, I'm I'm, I'm sure I've balanced the game enough. It will take yeah. quite some time to discover any flaws or infinites. Oh wait, he's this guy's discovered it like four hours into the release. And it, it's and it's not even because they were. I guess they had the mindset of, um, you know, we'll we'll do it. We'll patch it up case by case. But for the stuff that I was finding, it was like there is a problem within the system itself, and yeah. there's pretty much no way to fix the moves individually. Because which is which is a big deal. Yeah, because when King of the Streets came out, you know, you were the same. Uh, you yeah. went on the same path. You discovered like so many infinites for. There, that for game everyone. has a lot of infinites. The the game does. That game's actually pretty weird because in terms of like, because that game has chain combos as well. For example, on yeah. the ground, a lot of the moves do not have a lot of hits done at all. Like, just doing light, medium, heavy. It's pretty likely that that's not going to be a combo. Yeah. I, I, it's it's kind of a little bit hard to test things because you know uh, the the training mode features or whatever. Um, I, I had to use uh, my keyboard and the stick at the same time for a lot of this testing. Um, but once you 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 actually start juggling someone, there's pretty much nothing in the game that stops you from just 
yeah there's you know, no mechanisms no special yeah there, there is there is zero mechanism that sort of um prevents infinites from occurring um i guess what what schwarzenberg actually does now is um, so basically, they have an intended sort of combo feature called trigger combos. So if you've ever seen Schwarzer Blitz, you'll see how there's like those six bullets. Yeah, yeah. That, so that's like the meter of the game. And if you hold down um, the trigger button, which is like R1 or something, when you when you do an attack, it'll do like a, a tr- you'll enter the, the triggered state. That That's what it's called. Um, and it basically makes all your moves do... Well, it does a lot of things. One of the things it does, it makes your moves do a lot more hit stun. So it basically allows you to do... Like, there are some strings in the game that normally aren't natural combos. But if you if you spend the resource, um, they do become natural combos. So I guess the intended way of getting a lot of damage in that game is you sort of do those triggered chains. And because they also have a lot of hit stun, you can link them into more triggered chains. But the thing is, it's um you're spending resources to do those things, so it doesn't last forever. Yeah. Um, what they in what the solution to the whole infinite things ended up being is that, um, the more you use a move in a combo, the less hit stun that move will do. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. It's, yeah. That although that <clears throat> comes with its own um can of worms because it means that so. You know how it's like I said before, some strings aren't natural combos, but they become natural combos if you trigger. Mm-hmm. Um, the th- with the infinite prevention system, because it makes moves do less hit stun, some strings that are natural combos stop becoming natural combos, and that can be actually useful for gameplay reasons. Mm. Because what you can do is you have a string that goes like into a mid or it goes into a low, and normally it's a natural combo. But if you set it up so that um, one of the moves is triggering the infinite prevention system and it stops being a natural combo, it becomes a reset. Yeah. <laughs> so you can like choose whether to go mid or low. It's it's legitimately really it, like playing a lot of these games is sort of like opened up like my eyes to how difficult it can be to like controlling a lot of the stuff in fighting games that the the public tends to just kind of take for granted. Or, or there's, there's actually like, so much that goes into like if, if making... Like kind to just play, you know, like a like just a mainstream game like Street Fighter. Like with games like you're mentioning, they introduce yeah. a lot of concepts that, you know, players from that world wouldn't really understand. Yeah, and it's also just like, I don't know, if, if you only play mainstream games, like some people, uh, you know, like, I don't know, Cammy's broken or whatever, but like <laughs> they they haven't seen the real, you know, the real yeah. broken stuff. Like this is that... re- this is really off the paper. Yeah. Mm. But one one game that you do play a lot and you are quite proficient at it is um Power Rangers. And I mean you could say that's a bit of a, a mainstream game. It's getting popularity it's, like Marvel yeah, and it's, stuff. It's kind of got um a foot in both worlds in my opinion. Um because on release, there wasn't really too much people playing it, but it's, it's picked up quite quite a lot more in recent history, which is cool. Like, I, I'm happy for it. Um, yeah, there was the... It, we had it at Sub-Zero Scuffle, um, which I did much better than I thought I was going to. I, I ended up coming fourth. I, I'm, I'm actually tight, though, because um, the trophies for Sub-Zero Scuffle, they were awesome, man. So close! I could have got one. They were degrees, man. You're proficient degrees. in fighting. Degrees. I could have gotten the degree, man. Yeah. Uh, so close. Yeah. Power Rangers is tight. It's a versus game. If if you're into versus games, you'll probably you'll probably like it. Yeah. What was that? Um, there, what was that um, match um, in Sub Zero Scuffle like? Your your the defining match for you to get uh, into top four. Uh, how did I get into top four? I I can't remember who I beat. To be honest, um, I don't have the brackets on me. I know that loses semis. That was myself as a sim. TB is very young. Yeah, it was. It was um, interesting because, like that game, as you said, you know, it started off not a lot happening with it, but then as more people committed time, they were discovering like, oh, it's it, it can be like Marvel. Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of crazy comeback potential in this game. 
Yeah. Um. I. Yeah. I. I like the game. I don't like everything about it, though. I. I haven't been playing it too much recently. Um. One thing, and I think is kind of funny about that game is, um. You know how in. Well, a, a few fighting games, uh, there are things where you can hit people high and low in the same frame, and you can do an unblockable. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. So that that existed in Marvel Three, for example. That that's a game that I know has it. Um, that isn't in Skullgirls. Um, it isn't in MVCI. They actually don't have it that in MVCI. Um, but in Power Rangers, it does. But the thing is, it, it wasn't always like that. Um, when the game first came out, um, it actually did have unblockable protection, but it was, I think it was, like, unintended. Mm. So they, in one of the patches, this was pretty shortly before Sub-Zero Scuffle, they actually took out unblockable protection intentionally. Which is crazy to me, especially because, um, in that game, so you know how, um, you can juggle someone and you can hit them with a jab? Yes. Um, and they do, like, they flip out? Yeah. Um, one... One special thing about that state in particular in Power Rangers is that you cannot reversal from it. So, you know how there's like reversal supers and reversal EX moves? Yeah. If someone doesn't air reset you against you, you can only block if they hit you meaty. Shit. You cannot reversal. And that combined with the fact that if you, you know, you make someone block high and low on the same frame, they can't block it. You, you can do the math yourself as to what, what that means. It basically means that you can get guaranteed setups um, on people, which I think is, is like whack as hell. Not not a lot of people in New Zealand like are doing them at the moment, to my knowledge. But you know that that's one of the things about Power Rangers that is like really kind of sketchy to me. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot to like about the game um, in general, like the the tagging feels nice and you know it, having assists and all that and um what what what's the reason for your team because i see you've got red ranger time force ranger um and the third one uh i i, I don't know who the third not one time is. force i i play um on point mastered on century oh okay yeah um and then i play quantum ranger and um red ranger so the reason for that is well because in Skullgirls, I play what I, I'm mostly known for my peacock. That that's sort of been my character. So since then, I've always had a, had a crack at whatever zones that games have because that's like my favorite archetype to play. Um, so Sentry, you know, he's he's got a gun. I can shoot the gun. It's time. <laughs> Um, so that's why I picked Sentry. For Red Ranger, I, I kind of always wanted to play Red Ranger before the release, because I saw his assist, um, it kind of, um, you can call it, and it kind of puts him on the other side. H have you seen that? Yes, no, yeah, I have. It, so, it kind of reminds me of something similar that I ran in BB Tag. If you've seen me play BB Tag, um, I play Vatista and Mai in that game. And Mai's um, 5P hurt one of her assists. It's sort of like a full screen kind of lunge. So it's very useful because um, if, if they stay on the ground, they get pushed back, which is nice for like the zoning. But if they jump over it, um, Mai's on the other side. And BB Tag and Power Rangers have the same thing where you can swap to your assist. And you can like do something with the point. Um, so what I'd often do is I'd jump over Mai, and then I'd shoot a beam at them and switch, and the beam would be cross up because I swapped to Mai, who's on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's sort of like a cheap thing that I like to do. And I, when I saw that Red Ranger had a similar thing going on with his, it's like ah, that's tight. That's like the same thing. <laughs> so that's why I wanted to play Red Ranger because I thought I, it would be I, cheap. I it's actually salty with that. Yeah, it's 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 not as cheap as I thought it would be because like red, the assist doesn't move as far as mice does. Like you you kind of have to be in mid range for that stuff to happen. Yeah, but it, it it's still decently fun and like J Jason's a pretty fun character to play anyway. I I get to like I don't know how to do the unblockable setups that I'm talking about in terms of like the cheap shit, but. Um, with Jason, you can kind of, you know, jab reset, and you can dash to the other side or stay in front, and it's, like, a pretty easy reset to do that 
hits like almost everyone. <laughs> this, um... So that that's pretty fun as well. And Quantum Ranger, I picked up because he's cheap. He's top tier. Yeah. No, I, it, I mean, I, I grew up loving Power Rangers, so it's really, it's really funny but odd to see it as a, a fighting game that actually a lot of people respect. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, I, there's one more title that I want to mention, um, and it's a title that you got me playing um at Milky's one night, and Milky's. I was like, oh my god, I've yeah. seen this game. It's it's the the fight of animals one, like fight of. Uh, dude, okay. I mean, yeah, I played that. I played that for like two seconds. Yeah, um, but that, that was tight. Um. Fight, so it's made by the same developers that made Fight of Gods, if you've ever heard of that game. Okay. Um, so so it's kind of like the second... I've, I'm not sure what, what country the studio is from, but it's like China or Taiwan or something. I I, I, I could be very wrong on like where, where this developer is from. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess as you've seen on... This is like a netplay video. I mean, I just, like, recorded some netplay. It's actually one of the most popular videos on my channel somehow. I remember having um, that match with you, and I think I chose Mighty Fox as my first character, and I got so yeah. annoyed because I was like, why is he not punching? <laughs> oh, yeah, he can only use his, only use his feet. I was like, oh, come his on. Feet, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like... Um, how I feel about Fight of Animals, I feel like it's 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 like a funny game. It's like funny to see the characters. I, I don't think that there's a lot to it with regards to the gameplay, but I think it it's still kind of you know it's a it's a fun game to play like once or twice, and it's also it's got rollback netplay, which is amazing. That that's literally the reason why I purchased it in the first place because it had rollback. Like this video, it's against it, I don't know where in the world this other guy is from it may be some like the states or something i'm not sure but it's like it's definitely not like new zealand or australia this guy yeah no it handled pretty well i of all the characters i like the squirrel that could throw the kamehameha ah, the squirrel yeah 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 the kamehameha for the super yeah that the squirrel's pretty cool it's like got one of the only like actually decent projectiles in the game yeah man it's got got a fireball. It's cool. <laughs> I guess we can. I guess we can cover a bit about the Skullgirls community. You've mentioned it, and obviously, I know you're a big follower of it. Um, what yep. is the Skullgirls community like? Because you started with Smash, and I, yeah. and I and I kind of think that they're similar, not in terms of the, uh, just in terms of like the the attitude. Like, there's a big there there is a big hidden Skullgirls community in New Zealand. Am I right? I'm not. I'm not sure if in New Zealand, um, across Australia and New Zealand, there is a big Together. Skullgirls community. Um, but New Zealand, at this itself, there isn't a lot of players. There's around about four people active right now. Um, there's myself. There's Chimps. Um, if you've ever heard of Drip, he he's another player from Wellington who's been playing with us for quite some time, and is actually um, within the last few weeks. A play from Auckland called Hemrock that has started playing the game, um, which I'm sure because because apparently they also play Tekken, so I'm sure once locals start back up, we'll we'll see we'll see, yeah, we'll see them around. Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. So I I actually started competing in Skullgirls before Smash. Um, this was in 2013, like around about when the Steam release came out. Um, have I talked about this yet? Um, or no? Oh, go, feel free to go over it again, man. It's all good. All right, okay. Yeah, so the, there were some people so trying to run tournaments, and, you know, I, I took part in those tournaments, and that's sort of, like, where the beginnings of this community come from. This How we used to organize is <clears throat> through... We had a Steam group, and we used to, like, meet in the Steam group chat, um, that was just kind of how it was back then for a few years, and then eventually we switched over to um, Discord, where we sort of have our own um, server. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's been running for a long time, and that's sort of where um, I learned... Like, that for, for me, like, the Skogos community is a big part of, like, my experience with fighting games. Yeah. There, there's There's... And it's an experience that can probably only exist with um with GGPO with rollback. Um, if it wasn't for that, I doubt that the Oceania community would be 
even close to as strong as it is in the current day. Oh, you th- really? You think so? Yeah, um, because if when when I first was getting into the community, there like chimps wasn't around. There was no drip, no hemrog. It, it was really just me, um, me and the Aussies. So if um, because I know, for example, like with BB tag, I I I cannot play Australia in that game, so I don't even try. If Gogos had like delay based netcode, then you know I probably would have given up on it. Even though I played the demo by myself for like two years, who knows? Maybe I, I would still be grinding out training mode. <laughs> hey, here's a question: Do you think there was a recent update for it? Right, like improving the yes. netcode. Was the, did, in your was that unexpected, or do you think it was predicted? Unexpected. Yeah. It, it, basically, what that came from is there was um community member. I believe it was Liam who came up with the idea. We just had like I don't, he he had an idea because he sort of knows a lot of, he, he's one of the guys who works on he's a community manager for Skullgirls mobile and they use a lot of like the scripts as well he has like access to the source code so he knows a lot about the inner workings of the game and he so, sort of had an idea on how to improve the netcode and you know we it sort of got implemented this this is actually independent of um, the whole EVO Online announcement thing. Th- yeah. This was going to happen anyway. It's just kind of cool that those two things happen to coincide. Um, basically how that the most of the improvements work is I think um, with GGPO, uh, when... Hang on, let me, let me think about this. No, no, take, your it's time, some... man. take your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think how it works... Yeah, don't quote me on that. I'm sure there's a lot of other people who could explain this way better than I could. But when you're sort of waiting for inputs to come, so how G- rollback works is so you're you're playing with zero delay, well, well, whatever delay you set, right? Yeah. Um, and the other person's inputs, you know, they they might come at a certain time, they might come a bit later or whatever, because, you know, the internet's not perfect. Um, how rollback works is that instead, well, how delay base works is that the games always have to be synced up, so if you're waiting for the other person's inputs, like, the game just doesn't run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It just doesn't run until it has the inputs from the other person. So if if you've played like bad connections and games, well, I'm I'm sure you you know all about this because you're a Tekken player, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, far How, too familiar. <laughs> if if it's a bad connection, like the the game will slow down to a crawl, um, because it's waiting for the inputs for the from the other player before it continues um simulating the game with rollback on that does is that it doesn't stop simulating the game it's just that once the inputs finally do arrive it's like oh crap this is what it should have been if the inputs came when they should have come like yes. so it basically goes back and it re-simulates what the game would have been if the inputs came earlier and then that's what the rollback is it, it's sort of it's updating the game state yeah no nah, good explanation man because i mean you know like people i mean i'm fair to say that in the beginning like i i, I would be begging on you know like you know, you know like begging on netcode and not really yeah. knowing how it works but that was explained really good okay yeah, thanks um and with so Yeah, and what what the update, the recent updates to do with, it's with one of the things with GGPO. I think there's, current, currently in a lot of GGPO games, there's like a point where, when they're waiting for inputs. I, I'm not sure, because I just said like, it, it doesn't stop, like it doesn't stop simulating the game, but that's where the improvement comes in, because there is a situation where it, it makes the game sleep. Where, when it's waiting for inputs, but yeah. how what it, what the improvement does um, because Skullgirls um, runs on turbo, so it has um, frame skip. So if every I don't know however many frames it is instead of rendering, um, you know a certain amount of the frames aren't rendered, so it actually runs at faster than sixty fps. 
um, normally, just because it, it it's the game speed. The game has been sped up over several updates. Um, if you if you look at Skullgirls footage from 2012 and compare it from now, like it, it it's actually like pretty clear that the game used to be a lot slower. Okay. So what the new update does is that instead of um, sleeping in whatever situation it is that I can't remember right now, it slows down the frame rate of the game um, so that some of the frames that would normally get skip, they actually get rendered instead. So the reason why that helps is that it means that the game will still take your inputs. Yeah. Um, whereas before, when it, it, in situations where it kind of halted up, like it wouldn't accept your inputs. So for maybe if you're in the middle of like a quarter circle forward or something, it might miss one of those directions. Yeah. Like which is so that kind of yeah. yeah yeah so it sort of helps with the consistency. It actually makes like a pretty bloody big difference. Like I I wasn't in my mind like Skogirl's netcode was already like one of the best that I had ever played, but it's it's even better now, which is great. Um, yeah. it doesn't mean that I can play the entire world like because of where where we are. Like we're in New Zealand. Um. So it's far away from a lot of places, but I can play. I can put up with playing like North America, West Coast, to be honest, and that's all. That's okay. I probably wouldn't compete in it, but I I can play casuals with people from like California. Yeah. All so, right, and that's that's amazing. Yeah. Especially for a game that has like a smaller scene, being able to like expand the connections that would otherwise not be tolerable, and they are tolerable. It makes such a big difference for like the health of a game scene. Yeah, because I mean, despite, at least online yeah, play. Just, I mean, yeah, because I mean, despite games like Street Fighter and Tekken being so popular, overpopulated with players. I mean, yeah, yeah, the the the, the online is questionable, and you've got as you're saying a game like Skullgirls, which is incredible. So this whole you've mentioned it before, the whole Evo Online announcement, like that must just put this whole thing. Like this is this is a finally an opportunity where like people might actually turn to this game. How surprised were you when it was in that reveal? Um, I I had heard some because before they officially announced Evo Online, I had heard that you know maybe there was a chance they do something like that, right? The, because if as Evo wasn't going to happen because of COVID, yeah. So if they wanted to do online, all the games that they had in Evo, um. The the only game that they had on the lineup that had rollback was Street Fighter V, and even then, Street Fighter V's um, implementation of it isn't is questionable somewhat. So it's kind of like, well, if you can't really run um, sort of open tournaments with those games, and kind of like, kind of, what do you do? And and they ended up deciding on turning to games like Skullgirls, to Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct. Um, them's fighting herds, games that have had communities compete online for a long time. Yeah. Um, but so it's it was really cool. Um, it, I I was I was definitely a surprise to see Skullgirls um sort of be officially associated with Evo because the last time the closest that game has ever got to being in the Evo spotlight would have probably been in like 2013 with the whole um. There was the breast cancer donation drive. Yes. Do, yeah. do you remember anything about that? Uh, not not much. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's um, it's yeah. I mean, it's just good that they chose titles that are actually gonna do, like they're gonna bring it home. They'll yeah, yeah. Really you can online. you yeah. can because they could have decided to run um online brackets for stuff like Sam Show for other other stuff. But the 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 level of play that you would have seen from standard that you expect from like an Evo tournament. Yeah. Just cause it, there was pretty much no way that a lot of those games could have, you know, met, met that sort of expectation. So it's, it's really cool that I, I was, I was actually particularly surprised by them's fighting hoods, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. That, me too. For me, that was the biggest surprise because I feel like Skullgirls, Although not the most popular game, 
um, ha- has had a consistent presence, especially in NA, um, at a lot of offline tournaments across the years. For example, there's Combo Breaker, CEO Taku. Um, they've had like pretty big brackets for Skullgirls. And Mortal Kombat and Killer Instinct have been sort of mainstays. Although, it, although you know, Mortal Kombat wasn't at EVO this year, which was pretty surprising to me yeah. personally, because NRS has been such a mainstay at EVO for so long. Um, what was my tangent? Flipping heck. <laughs> oh, uh, just that them's fighting hurts, like you know. Um, ah, them's being yeah, them's fighting yeah. hurts. I mean, it's I mean, that, from all the games that you've learnt, man, and played, where does this one sit in terms of enjoyment? I love this game, man. This game is so good. The, this this is definitely like one of my favorite um, fighting games R- right now, especially. I ran a bracket for this game last night. Um, we ran. Um, a fourteen-man bracket, actually, pretty decent. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's not, I kept, it's not I humans. Sing- it's it's yeah. it's 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 deers, horses, cows. Um, yeah, and I mean, I know you're using a zoner. You, you love your zoning. Um, I love zone. I love the visuals. That's part of the reason why I love this game because a lot of games don't have like crazy zoners these days. Yeah. Whereas, like, Velvet in this game is like so insane for a zoner that it's like I really can't help but love it. So like what 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 are your so like what are your predictions in terms of how Evo will run online? Like what do you think the biggest challenge will be? Like there'll still be challenges, but what do you think um, one of the challenges will be hosting these four games for Evo Online? Um, okay, so one of the biggest things I don't actually know about this, but they need to decide um, if what are they gonna you know re- restrict it to regions as in, like who are they gonna let play the game? And how are they going to si- decide, like, you get to play, you get to enter, you don't get to enter. I think that's going to be important, because although all these games have, like, amazing net code, you know, th- th- you can't save every connection. So I wouldn't be too surprised if, like, maybe it maybe it gets limited to NA, maybe it gets limited to certain regions, maybe you might have to have this ping or whatever to be able to enter. So I think that's going to be an issue. Um, I don't know how that's going to turn out, so that'll be interesting to see, because an online event on the scale of EVO Online has never really been done before. Yeah, that's true. Actually, I forgot to ask, what is the what is the online lobby structure like for them's fighting herds? Ah, uh, okay, so that that's one of the really cool things about that game. So the, what they have is something called pixel lobbies, um, and what that is is you basically... Um, it's sort of like an overworld, I guess, where you control a sprite of the characters, and you can sort of move around, um, and it has, like, voice chat and stuff. There's also a player versus enemy sort of thing called the Salt Mines, where you can, um, go in and fight, like, AI enemies and mine salt or whatever. It, there's, there's a lot of, like, things to do, and it's also because... Well, it's not the first game to have the idea of, you know, there's an overworld lobby that you can move around with. We've seen that a lot from Arxis, especially in their games. Like, Dragon Ball's a good example of that, right? Um, yeah. Also, Guilty Gear has something like that. BB Tag is the same thing. But in my opinion, them's Fighting Hurts is specific implementation of that idea is, like, the most social of the idea, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, because, well, there's full voice chat, for example, and there's also text chat. You can, like, type things out, you can talk to other people, um, whereas in a lot of games, like, I, I for example, Dragon Ball, it, it's mostly limited to emotes, whereas in, like, in, in those games, I feel like, while you can often see other people existing within the lobbies, it's, like, it's kind of hard to, you know, interact with those people and meet those people. Yeah. Whereas in, I feel like the experience is very different in Them's Fighting Hoods, and it, it's really good. A lot of things about Them's Fighting Hoods as a product, it's actually, like, top top class, yeah. in my opinion. Its training mode in particular is, is very good as well. Um, it has all this, because it uses the same engine as Skullgirls, so it has pretty much a Skullgirls training mode, but, like, with even more features. Um, it's... And Skullgirls, 
well, a big one, for example, is you know there's save states. Um, you can look at all the hitboxes within the game itself. You can look at all the frame data within the game itself. You can find out all the move properties within the game itself. You don't need to like have an app or something to check, you know, when th- when this move is invincible or whatever. Um, which is huge for when you're trying to like break a game down. Yeah. Um, and then Finding Hoods has the same thing, but it also has some other really cool stuff. One of my favorite features that it has is that you can actually make your own combo trials. Oh, that's sick, man. I it's like sick, it. yes. yeah. It's awesome. You can, so you like have it, so you record, you like do a combo, and then you can save that as like a combo trial, and then you can do the combo trial, which is amazing. But not only that, you, the... The files for the combo dra- trials, they're like stored in a place on your computer. So you can go to that place and you can get the files and you can send them to other people. That's cool. I like, yeah, that's so, so cool. So that, that's a thing that like a few members of the community have done. They've sort of compiled some, some of their own trials for the characters that you can go and you can download and then you can like try out combos from the community. And, it, and it's, it's such a cool way of like, um, teaching people about you know how to perform a lot of this stuff. I, yeah. I know. I, I think it's an amazing feature, and I'd I'd love for it to be in more games. Yeah. Well, it just makes it seem more like it's a like it's a like it's a challenge rather than it being like this big task of oh I've got this big combo to do I need to use these moves. Like it just makes it into a fun little challenge. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Whereas before it's like because often you'll be trying to. For, uh, maybe someone makes a video and you'll have to try and figure out what the moves are or like maybe you're looking at a transcript and you, you'll have to spend some time like quite a lot of time figuring it out first i don't know i feel like it's it's a really cool um approach of doing this sort of thing yeah hey you mentioned this guy before um, i want to bring him up again chimps um i think when i met him he was going by a different name called yoma yes um yeah, he um he's a, yeah because I mean you know he's obviously not the Skull Girls player. I met him in Tag Two. Um, he didn't play as much. Uh, he used Bake and I think it was Whoring at the Bake. time. Um, and yeah, ah, he's, he's honestly he was very active on Tekken Saibatsu, and he was so flow charty. Like he would break down a move and break down the range, the damage. And this is before we had apps and getting all that. Data. Yeah, I've actually I've actually heard like he he's that he's done a lot of stuff like that in the past, yeah. So flow charty. I'm like, holy like how much time do you spend I'm just I mentioned it because is would you consider him a player who is very flow chart, like by the book? Um I think that he definitely likes to break down like a lot of what he does systematically. I think that applies a lot to him as a player yeah yeah um would you, would you consider him your rival because i've always felt like you two have more so than anyone else yeah for sure if 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 there's someone that is like if i have to pick a rival like that chimps is that um we because so i first met chimps um he he wasn't going by that name he also wasn't going by yoma when i first met him he was going by yoma buddy <laughs> that was his original tag, Yoma Buddy. Um, that that's where Yoma comes from because uh, it, it's like a pun. Yeah. But then he sort of shortened it, and then he changed it all together. Um, but we, I met him through the forum Skullheart.com, which was like the main sort of um, forum that Skullgirls players used. Um, they don't use it so much these days. Most of the community is now on Twitter and Discord, as is the case for almost all communities, really. Um, I'm not sure how Tekken Saibatsu is doing today or like how Test Your Mind is doing uh, today, yeah, but I'd nah. imagine it's a pretty similar situation, not, yeah, right? Yeah, not, not, in, not in the realm of... Yeah, not around. Yeah. Really. So he was posting, I think, on the beginner forums, like some of the notes that he was taking or whatever, and that he was interested in playing people. I was like, damn, it, 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 when I first saw that, like, my mind, I was so excited, my mind was bloody blown, because it's like, for for so long I was, um, sort of the representative of New Zealand and Skullgirls, I, I was one of the only people, like, playing the game, and all of a sudden here's this other guy who, like, wants to play Skullgirls, and he's also from New Zealand, it was like, that was crazy to me, um, 
and so yeah, he started sort of playing in the same sort of online tournaments. Um, we eventually first met in person at Xmas Damager one year. I forget what year it was, um, but ever since then, you know, we we tend to see each other when we go to majors. Yeah, and yeah, it it's been really cool. We also occasionally like play games outside of Skullgirls. Like, for example, he he's he was big into Guilty Gear. I also was fairly into Guilty Gear at one point. Um, Rifles of Ether is a game that we both play. Um, it, it's been a Power Rangers more recently. Yeah. Um, Dra Dragon Ball when it first came out. Just whenever there's been a new game that both of us want to play, it, like it, I I often go to him as sort of like um, sort of the first um, person to ask if if they want to you know practice first point stuff. of contact. Yeah. Yeah. First point of contact. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's very resourceful, very knowledgeable. Um, and we just saw mm. that money match that you had with him at Sub Zero Scuffle. Was that yes. just a friendly money match, or was there some was there something behind it? There, there wasn't really anything behind it. It, it, it. We kind of have always wanted to do some kind of a set in front of people. Like we've been trying to do something like that for like years, really, but it's never really worked out. Um, and I guess with the way that it was working to at that night um at first we didn't want to put 30 dollars on it because uh, i think he first came up with the idea i'm not sure maybe maybe like 15 or something because it, it was based on like the amount of cash that he had on him i i didn't really have much cash on me but like i i, I was fine anyway because i was confident that i was gonna win it <laughs> um, <laughs> but i was like oh yeah sure but then like I think it was Butterjaw that was like, oh, damn, you guys are chickening out or whatever. We're not going to have this on for such a small amount. So we're like, okay, 30, sure. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was really cool um, to play a set in front of people. We tried to talk some crap. I, I am very bad at talking crap to people. That was something hey. that I, I've discovered before, but I definitely discovered again that night. You, you may think you're bad, but the morning after, the, the the little tweet, the little meme that you send out, it, that that's all you need, bro. That's all you need. <laughs> I mean, that that's different from like actually, you know, talking in the moment. Um, something that sort of can be a bit more premeditated and stuff. That that stuff that stuff comes a lot more naturally to me personally. Yeah, for sure. No, that's cool. But that that was fun. We uh, also we also played a first to ten. Um, just before we did the money match, actually. Honestly, like he's. He's he's like when those Smash players of Sub Zero Scuffle got drunk, I actually got really scared. Like some of them <laughs> would you no, know, some of them were just straight up crazy. Like oh yeah, we, Smash players can get rowdy. Well, but man. I mean, Chips is kind of the same thing. Like when he was drinking, he just did not give a fuck. <laughs> Bro, yeah. This is gonna be amazing. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Do do, do you have any um? Are you gonna? Would you feel like you're up for another challenge with him um, in the near future? Anytime, anytime, anytime. Yeah. Um. When when we next see each other, yeah, we can run it again. Yeah. I wouldn't mind that. That'd be cool. Because <clears throat> he he doesn't play the same team at the moment. He actually plays Robo Fortune and Fulia now. Oh, because they've um. Oh, really? Yeah. He he he's he's often like finds himself in a bit of a character crisis. Okay, that's kind of like a pretty common thing for him in Skullgirls. Um, yeah. He he's played a lot of different teams over the years. Um, Phil, Philia and Big Band have, have, are sort of the characters I tend to associate with him the most. Yeah. Um, oftentimes, the teams that he plays will have like some some of those characters in there somewhere. Oh, mm. Should have seen that. But yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, no, no, he's no, he's just a good dude. Um, yeah, just he's a, yeah, good very, dude. Yeah, very awesome. cheeky when he's drunk, he, he's, man. Jesus Christ, he's just cheeky in general, man. Um, but yeah, he's he's awesome. I I've stayed whenever I've been in Wellington, like he, I I've stayed with his family. Um, so that's been like really nice of them. Um, and I definitely appreciate all of that. What's um What's been one of the best matches you've had with this guy? With chimps, yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of really hard to pinpoint 
a really good match just because we've played so much. I don't know. Like, I guess, I don't know, maybe... Yeah, maybe the money match would be up there since that was one of the few examples where there was kind of like a little bit of a crowd and like some people that were sort of sort of talking about the match while it was going on, which was like interesting. It's, it's not an experience that I normally have yeah. in Skullgirls at least. Yeah. Sweet, man. But yeah, the most recent we played um in Rambats. So we, we run like our tournaments, we do it on the last Friday of the month. So we just had our Rambats for May. And he actually, he beat me in winner's semis, but then I beat him in loser's finals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great. So, fit, like, we're, we're still, like, I, I normally get the better of him, but, like, it, either of us can sort of win at any time, Yeah, I feel, whenever we go up against each other, which, which is really nice to have. Yeah, man. Sort of someone that's relatively evenly matched. Yeah. Well, I'll just get into these uh, final questions now, bro. So, first yeah. one is, what's the most challenging song you would learn to play with Big Band and Skullgirls? Well, the thing is, I'm not sure if I'd, I'd actually learn um, a song. Most of the, all the songs that I've been, all the videos that I'm making have actually been tasks. When, whenever I actually get a chance to play a song, um, them in matches I almost never do, which is funny. Everyone gives me shit for it. It's like, oh, why don't you play a song? But because I don't know, just in the moment when whenever I land the level five, I I just I just want it to get get over with as quickly as I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I I don't know. I'm not really interested in um actually playing the songs i can i can play happy birthday i can play twinkle twinkle little star and all you know those songs are pretty easy to play <laughs> but but yeah those are probably the most challenging because the ones that actually require some dexterity i'd, pr I'd probably rather laugh some other stuff to be honest <laughs> okay fair enough next if you hosted a gaming event name a non-fighting game title that would be there Ah, non-fight. Well, that's hard because that would require me to like be interested in games that aren't fighting games. Mm. Um, flipping Nick. I could I could go for the meme and say Smash, right? <laughs> um, gonna, but, wow, you're gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> like to to be honest, like I I I don't really pay attention a lot to like competitive games that are not fighting games. So I, it, I nothing really comes to mind. To, to me at this point in time yeah okay um i, I mean hey you could even just say beer pong um ping normal ping pong but yeah no uh yeah yeah uh cluedo bro cluedo, cluedo. okay sweet cluedo yeah we'll play cluedo, cluedo. <laughs> <Be tight. laughs> sweet power rangers battle for the grid or grand blue fantasy versus uh power rangers is easy easy power rangers easy i i, I don't play grand blue <laughs> Describe the Dead or Alive Six Christchurch Championship in oh three words. God. Wait, this is a Christchurch one. <laughs> um, not not the one that actually happened, right? No, no, not the one we had. The, uh, the okay, other well, one. It didn't happen. It didn't <laughs> that, happen. That's, awesome. that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> it didn't happen. What do you and consistent have in common? Uh I know. Ah, oh, as in, like, we both beat chimps in a buddy match? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't a dick. I was, I was just like, hey. I, nah. I, I mean, what else could you be? I mean, we both play Marvel, right? And we, yeah. we both have our have our toes in various anime games, but yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, sure, I'm sure that's kind of, like, where, where that was coming from. Yeah. What's your favorite FGC meme? FGC meme? Man, I... I the, those go by so fast these days. I can't even like remember any FGC memes. Of I the there was one recently where people just Photoshop a picture of like low tier god into things. I don't really understand that one. Have you seen that one? Yeah, yeah. They've made him Dante. Um, Dante. Other other characters. Wild. Yeah. Um. I maybe maybe I'll just go with like the random big band trumpet videos because like those are the ones that I actually make. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet man. Name someone from the NZFGC you think of when you hear these words. Teddy bear. I know. Adam? Maybe? Come to you? Adam? Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, I, yeah that, that's a good choice. I would have thought Silver, but yeah, Adam's just as good. Ah, uh, Danny? Yeah, I, I haven't... Yeah, when, when's Danny coming back? Bro, that is the only question, eh, that matters. Yeah. Where the hell is he? I miss that guy, man. Yeah. That guy's so, awesome. Done so much. Hope he's all right. Now, who do you think will win Skullgirls at EVO Online? I mean, it's probably Sonic Fox, right? But it could... Yeah, I'll, I'll go with Sonic Fox. Hey, sure. it's, it's online. One disconnect could make the difference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. All right, we'll go for Sonic Fox. And who is your waifu? I don't, I don't really got a waifu. Do you mean like, do you mean like fighting game waifu or waifus in general? Um, waifu in general. Like, yeah, if it's not a fighting game, it could be any other game or any other thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I I'm not really that sort of guy. It, it's not really something that I've ever really done. I know Parasol's hot. Let's go with Parasol. All right, Parasol. All right. Why not? Cool. Well, thanks again, Mal, for your time. Um, the stories. Do you have any last words or shoutouts? Um, I don't know, play, play, check out Skullgirls, check out Counter 2, check out Schwarzlitz, check out them fighting herds, um, shoutouts to Skullgirls Oceania, all the New Zealand FGC people, and yeah, yeah, that's, a, that's about all I gotta say. Nah, sweet ass man, take care. Awesome.